from one mum to another mum. Yeah, my husband says, you better introduce yourself. Yes, I'm a mother. God has blessed me with four children. My eldest is 33. My youngest is 26. You know, so nobody's staying at home. We are fit. <laughs> we don't have to ask anybody, what do you want to eat? Ah? Have you eaten? Ah? <laughs> so we don't have to ask anyone that. It's just the two of us. So I want to share with you something from one mum to another. Let's look at Jesus' mother. Jesus' mother would tell you this if she wrote you a letter. Mothers, submit to the Lord. Those of you who are not mothers can listen also. It's not a secret. Mothers, submit to the Lord. What does it mean by that? You know, the angel Gabriel appeared to her and told her such good news that you are going to be the mother of the saviour of the world. Mothers, if you had an angel appear before you and tell you such good news, how would you feel? that you would be the mother of the saviour of the world. And then he tells you, but you will be a virgin. Is that good news to you? I don't think so. <laughs> Panic attack, <laughs> you know? Overthinking, what's going to happen? What does it mean? You know, a lot of things. Your brain would go into a overdrive and it's not good news. So Mary didn't fully understand the words of the angel and he, she wasn't sure how things would happen because it's never happened before. There was no way she would have heard from someone else how you would be the mother of the saviour of the world. But yet, what did she do? She decided to trust the Lord. She decided to submit herself to the Lord. So mothers, the most important thing to do in your life as a mother is to submit yourself to God, to trust God, to put God as the first of everything in your life. So in Luke verse 38, Mary responds, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Did she know what was going to happen? Not really. Did she know how it was going to happen? No idea. Was there anyone in her village or among her relatives she could consult who could tell her what to do and how to prepare herself? Nobody. Because it has never happened before. But she chose to trust God, to submit herself to God. The second thing that Mary would tell you, mothers, is to be thankful. So what happened after this was that the angel told Mary, you know your cousin Elizabeth, who was barren? She's now six months pregnant. And so Mary went to visit her cousin. And when she greeted her cousin, the baby in Elizabeth leapt for joy. And Elizabeth just prophesied and said, you know, why would the mother of my Lord come and visit me? Would Elizabeth have heard what the angel said to Mary? No. But that was upon the unction of the Holy Spirit that she said, you are the mother of my Lord. When you came, this baby leapt for joy. And what would Mary think? Ha! Huh. It's a confirmation of what the angel said to me. Here is someone else who doesn't know anything about what the angel said and she's saying the same things. And then after that, you have what you call the Magnificat where Mary says, My soul glorifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is His name. Mothers, be mindful of God's hand upon your life. Be mindful of how God takes care of you. 
Be mindful that every morning when you wake up and you see the sunrise, it's another day to live for Jesus. Once I told my children, you know, after all complaints, complaints, you know, once I told them, I said, my responsibility as a mother is to teach you how to live so that if in the unfortunate circumstance that I die in my sleep and I don't wake up tomorrow morning, which I say I will pray won't happen or else it will shock you and then, you know, it will be trouble to you that you don't wake me up to go to school and then suddenly find my body cold. But if at any time I should pass away, you would know how to live. You would know how to carry on living and what life is about. That is my responsibility as a mum. Not just to provide, not just to take care of you, but to teach you how to live. But I can only teach them how to live if I know how to live myself. I cannot teach them what I don't know. And this is what Mary is saying. Mothers, be thankful. Count your blessings. Before you fall asleep at night, thank God for five things. When you wake up in the morning, thank God for five things. Thank God that your children came home. Thank God the children who argue with you still come home. Thank you for the children that exasperate you are still sleeping under your roof. Sometimes when I thank God, it's a bit like releasing frustration, you know. But I just say thank you, but actually not in a thankful tone. You know? But when you, when you confess these things with your lips, it aligns your thoughts with what is right. That God is first and foremost. Mothers, if you are blessed with a husband who's hardworking, yeah, he will be tired because he's hardworking. Be thankful that he provides for the family. Sometimes a part of you, you have well-meaningful friends, talk about romance, la, dating. But when your husband is working hard so that you can be free to look after the children, I don't think he's the most romantic man because he'll come back tired, have dinner, wash up, and I want to rest for a while and go to sleep. But if you look at the part of I'm missing on romance and not being thankful for the good husband you have, a good father to your children, you forget to be thankful. And mothers, when we are thankful, we teach our children to be thankful. When we are thankful, we don't complain about our hardworking husbands, but we tell our children, you know, you must be thankful. Your father works very hard. He goes to work before the sun is out. He comes back after the sun has gone down. He doesn't even see the sun. But he's doing all this because he loves you. So when we are thankful, we teach our children how to be thankful as well. And when you are a thankful mother, you are a nice wife. Because when your tired husband comes back, he doesn't hear you complaining, but he is thankful that his wife doesn't add to his load. And because of that, your husband will learn to be thankful too. If your husband is not thankful, don't worry. Because when you submit to the Lord and you are thankful, you know God will speak to him. And God speaks to him is everlasting. You speak to him, he may forget. You know, so mothers, remember this. As you submit to the Lord, be thankful. Be mindful of God's hand upon your life. Be thankful for the children you have in your house. Be thankful for your children who are out of your house, who still call you once in a while, who text you once in a while. If they don't, don't feel bad. Don't feel sad. Text them. And God will be reminding you and encouraging you. As much as Elizabeth's words were encouraging to Mary, keep a journal, write down. Whenever God gives you an impression, whenever God gives you a teaching moment, write it down. Why? Because we mothers have very short-term memory because there are so many things in our mind. We have schedules, we have timetable. I told people the worst thing that could happen to me last time was if my clock stopped. I would panic because then the whole schedule would run out <laughs> I'll, and I'll be one of the uh, not-so-nice drivers on the road, you know, cutting in and rushing because you're late. No. 
So write down the things that God has promised you. Because in your times of, of uh, frustra frustration, in your times when you... Uh, every day also like that, you know? And you come to God, bef God will encourage you. Always. God will encourage you. Sorry, uh, I'm Okay, and another thing Mary would tell you, besides submitting to God and being thankful, is that mothers, you don't know everything. Even though sometimes your husband thinks you ought to know everything, or your children think you ought to know everything, but reality is, mothers, we don't know everything. We don't know how to advise our kids sometimes. You know, it's like your kid comes back, stays, there's a bit of bullying. What do you do? Like last time, my uncles and aunties say, go and punch him back. We know it doesn't solve the problem. But we need wisdom because we don't know everything. And as you submit to God, God blesses you with wisdom that comes just for mothers. Wisdom from fathers come packaged differently. Wisdom from mothers come packaged differently. And mothers, it's okay to feel, I don't know everything. It's all right. It's okay to feel, I can't do everything. It's okay. We are human. We are not a machine. What we can do is as much as we need to turn to the Lord, we can tell our husbands and children, let's ask God what to do, what to say, what to choose. Once my daughter was asked to go to Langkawi for a leadership camp, school teacher called me. Um, go to Langkawi. Anybody from the school? No, nope. it's from different schools in JB. Each school sends one representative. Um, any teacher from the school going? No. Don't know anybody just sent to Langkawi. That time was only 11 years old, you know. <laughs> um, okay. I will ask my husband first. Standard answer, right? So I call my husband in Singapore and say, okay, this is what happened. So what are you going to say? So our natural response is say no. Because you don't know what's happening. There's no one to, to be accountable. But yet we felt there was a check in our spirits that I think God says let her go. And so we reluctantly let her go and of course we did other things to make sure you know you network in case anything happens. So fast forward, what happened is that the year after when she was 12 years old, because she had gone for this leadership camp, she was made assistant head prefect when actually it would never have happened to her. But just because she went for this camp. Mothers, we don't know everything. We only know today, this week, this month, maybe. Next year, we don't know. And this was necessary for her because of how she is made up. That she needed to know that there are these things in her life which would not have happened if not for God's hand and making things happen in her life. Because of her makeup. Another time, we go for our yearly eye checkup, and suddenly her power jumped a lot. And we were told, uh, come back again next week, and we check again. And it was still so high. And our nice brother said, uh, why don't we come again another week? And I just asked him, what are you afraid of? You know? And of course, he was afraid I'll be a worry ward and be anxious or anything. Anyway, the worst case scenario was that she would need an uh, operation. And she would go blind otherwise. So when the girl is not even 15 years old yet, you know, you explain this to her, you can imagine what happens. And as a mother, you don't know what to do. How? Pray, Lord. Don't know how to pray, hold her hand and just pray. Lah, and ask her to pray, lah. So thank God, the long shot of it, the eyesight became normal again. 
But she needed these things in her life to remember that God comes through for her. And as mothers who don't know what to do, what can we do? Pray all. Pray together with them. You know? And it's okay to let your children know when you're praying, God, I don't know what to pray. God, I don't know what's happening. It's all right. Because your children go through the same thing. So mothers, it's okay not to know everything. But the important thing is, when you don't know everything, remember to continue to submit to God. God knows everything. And so when the shepherds appeared to Mary and told Mary that, oh, angels appeared to us and told us about this and we came to look for you, and what did Mary feel? Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. Sometimes your kids come back from camp and say, I was prayed for, and this was what I was prayed for. Mothers, just write it down. We don't have to have an answer to everything, okay? And even when Jesus went missing and they finally found him in Jerusalem, teaching in the temple, and Jesus told, him, told her, I need to be in my father's house. She didn't understand. But Mary treasured all these things in her heart. Sometimes we bring our children up for prayer during their CBC camp, during certain meetings, maybe during the family camp. Sometimes your children say, oh, my, my cell group leader prayed for me and this is what she said, he said. And you don't really know what's happening. It's okay, mothers. Just write it down. It's okay not to know everything. And Mary will tell you, mothers, that you have this ability to have faith. You know, there are many stories in this world about how things change just because a mother believed. A mother that refused to give up on her child. Mothers, you have this special thing in you that even though you don't know anything, even though you tell people, I'm not so smart, I'm not so skillful, I'm not so able, it does not matter because you are the best mother to your child. We believe nothing happens by accident, that our lives are in God's hands. And God has matched your child with you. You are the best mother to your son. You are the best mother to your daughter. You don't have to be the smartest. You don't have to be the prettiest. You don't have to be the richest. You don't have to be the most skillful. It doesn't matter, but you are the best mother to your child. And because you are the best mother to your child, you have this reservoir of faith that can be activated. That whatever you see your child going through, you can pray for them. You can pray over them. Even when you don't see it, you can believe that God is working. Even when you don't feel it, you can believe that God is working. How many of us were angels when we were young? Some of us were very naughty. Some of us were rascals. And yet, who are you today? So for your children, take heart. You have the ability to believe and you have the ability to pray for God's will to happen in their life, for them to be changed, for them to come to know the Lord and live God-fearing lives and make God-led decisions. If you look, example, for like Jesus' mother, she didn't know and her whole life, I think, was really challenging. You know, you have this question hanging over your head. What am I supposed to do as Jesus' mother? I told my children once, when you're a parent, there is no guidebook that you can look behind and have the model answer. 
You know, when you're doing maths questions, you're not sure whether you're right or wrong, there's always the back page where the answers are. Parents, we don't have such a book, do we? And parents, every kid is different. If you found one answer, you can't find the other three. And the best thing that mothers, you can tell your children is, I may not have done everything you want me to be. But all I can tell you is, I did my best. With whatever knowledge I have, with whatever experience with, I have, with whatever thoughts I have, I did my best. And if I was wrong, I was sincerely wrong. But I believe in a God that is so big that when I'm sincerely wrong, God can make it right. And God can teach me how to make it right. And so you look at Jacobet, Moses' mother. In Hebrews 11 verse 23, it says, By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after he was born because they saw he was no ordinary child and they were not afraid of the king's edict. Which means they were prepared to hide Moses at the risk of their whole family being killed if they were found out. But yet, there was this faith in them to believe that I have to save this child. And so mothers, you have this ability to believe. As you submit to the Lord, let Him stir up that faith in you to believe. And so, there's another letter to the rest of you, our family. There is this saying that goes, it takes a village to raise a child. You are all the other people in this family of God that needs to support mothers in their journey of mothering. If you see young children around, be kind to them. Be their extended aunties and uncles. Encourage them. Tell them you are happy to see them in church. Tell them you are happy that, hey, they came for CBC too when you pick up your children. When you see other mothers, encourage them. Because a lot of mothers, what is one common thing? They're tired. And sometimes when you're doing and you're busy, you feel tired and you feel unappreciated. It's nice when someone suddenly comes to you and says, Hi, it was nice to see you in church today. You know? And if you know they have a handful, commit yourself to say, either I pray for you to bless you, or I am praying for your family. Don't say and don't do. Uh. For those of you who have grown children like me and you see young parents, you understand what they go through. Reach out to them. Encourage them. Buy them lunch, maybe. Help manage their children when they go to Eden for lunch and they're trying to sit one, two, three down and one is climbing up on the chair while two is trying to sit down. You know, that kind of thing. Be around. Give a helping hand. When you do it more often, the children will recognize you and respond to you. We are a family. We help one another. We encourage one another. We build one another up. So in Romans 14, 19, it says, So then, let us pursue, make every effort, what makes for peace and, build, and for building up one another. In the Asian culture in the past, I don't know about now, but last time, you know, when you bring your children back, your Chinese New Year, you know, your, your well-meaning relatives will say things like, why is not eating rice yet, ah? Um, you never boil porridge for him. Ah? Or things like, um, why they sleep so late? Ah? You know, you have well-meaning relatives who say these things to you. So as a family of God, I pray that you all will be a little bit more understanding. Instead of asking questions, give encouragement. Give blessing. 
Because, you see, as a mother, it's not like I don't want to do my best. It's not like I don't want to feed my children well. My children just don't want to eat. You know, my daughter can put three types of vegetable in the mouth and the corn can come out on because she doesn't like corn. You know? And then you, you're telling me that corn is good. I know corn is good, but this girl uh, can somehow, you know, strain it and still have the corn come out. So what to do? You know? It's, it, you know, it's not like mothers are not trying or mothers don't want to try. So, please be encouraging. Alright? Uh, husbands also take note. Huh? <laughs> uh, okay, I've, tr I've got trouble with this thing. Okay, never mind. I cannot see, but I'll just share. Oops, sorry. Oh, is it there? All right. Okay, encourage mothers, primary caregivers. All right, another thing, the last letter to give you today is to the rest of you. Okay, for those of you who may not be mothers, I feel this is God's word to you. Isaiah 49, verses 15 to 16. Can a woman forget her baby who nurses at her breast? Can she withhold compassion from the child she has born? Even if mothers were to forget, the Lord says, I would never forget you. Look, I have inscribed your name on my palms. Your walls are constantly before me. Some of us do not have a good relationship with our mothers. Some of us did not have a mum for most of our lives. Some of us remember our mothers with more pain than good memories. And yet, the Lord would say to you, even if mothers were to forget, I would never forget you. So if you think that there are things in, in your memory, in your past that are painful and you don't want to talk about it, nothing to be proud of, nothing to be mentioned. The Lord says, He doesn't forget you. He knows you. He writes your name on His palm. He remembers you. Shall we pray? Father, your love to us is everlasting. Father, you gave your best to us, Jesus. Because you wanted to show us how much you loved us. Father, we come before you and ask that, Lord, you would show us what is the height, what is the depth, what is the width, what is the breadth of your love towards us. Your love that surpasses everything and anything we can think of. Your love that knows no bounds, that is limitless. That your thoughts are ever towards us. That your heart is towards us and for us, Lord. Lord, we ask, let your love just fill us again. Fill us till it overflows. Let your love be that ointment, that balm, that heals every hurt, that removes every scar, that heals every memory. Let your love just fill us, Lord. Shower us with your love, Lord. Overflow, Lord. Lord, we surrender to you. We submit to you. Lord, we want to honour the mothers here, Lord. Lord, you see them. You see their heart. Lord, you see it tender and sometimes hurt. Lord, strengthen them. 
comfort them, encourage them, give them strength. And Lord, help us believe that we are made mothers for our children and we are the best mothers for our children and they are the best children for us. And that Lord, in our families, we see you. We see your greatness. We see your wholeness. We see your kindness. We see your gentleness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let us be a family that encourages one another, that builds one another up, that this is a place that is a home away from home. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name.